Greetings and welcome my friends. This is Portal, No Escape. This is a slightly different take on what we did with Open Water 2. With this deck we include Portal to Phyrexia and make it difficult for the opponent by including High Noon. We aim to do our artifact shenanigans but we've got significant differences between this deck and Open Water 2. We still look to build up an army of big robot men. We kick things off with two copies of the Iron Crag. It's a mana artifact that helps us get to our more expensive cards. It can turn into an equipment when we play out a legend, but we really only want the extra mana boost. High Noon is our tricky card. It affects us as well but we have plenty of things to do with our artifacts and legends that we don't mind the restriction. Being limited to only one spell per turn will hinder the opponent the majority of the time. We have enough activated abilities that we can continue to improve our board without having to double spell. Not on my watch is exile removal that we plan to use on any men that come in and we are unable to block. We'll use it to snipe any problematic attacker, especially early in the game. This works great against mono red show off which lands early. Negate is our insurance against any sweepers that might take out multiple artifacts. Regular sweepers we won't worry about too much since we can rebuild our robot army pretty quickly but we can't have farewell taking out our board. Mysterious Tome is an artifact that will help us draw into more ammo. And it will complicate combat for the opponent. It's a utility card that has gone overlooked since its release. It will put in some work and it will trigger our synthesizer when we play it out. Up next is our key card, the synthesizer. It's absolutely amazing, the turn you play it we get a scry too. After that we get a robot every time we land an artifact with mana cost 3 or more. World Walker Helm is a fantastic follow-up to the synthesizer. With it we can copy any token artifact for an easy 2 mana. And not only will it copy the token, but it also makes a map token as well. And this is a great way to get around our own high noon. This is an activated ability that we can use to continue growing our board without having to play additional cards. One copy of Abuelo is all we're playing in the deck. With Open Water 2 we found out it was insanely difficult to keep him in play and we rarely were able to use his blinking ability. We're not focused on blinking this time around as we are on building up our board and keeping it intact against crippling cards. Relic of Legends is another mana artifact. It's 3 mana to play so we'll trigger our synthesizer. It is a great piece to help us get to our higher cost cards. With it in play we can tap any of our legends to gain an additional mana. Devious Cover Up is another counter to help us maintain our advantage. Unlike Negate, the cover up can counter any card. It will exile what we hit with it so it can permanently solve a problem. Prince Urza is here as an enabler. For 6 mana we can make a token copy of any artifact we control at instant speed. Instant portal, yup, we can do that. Instant synthesizer, coming right up. Once we make a token copy of one of our artifacts, Worldwalker Helm can start making token copies for just 2 mana. Prince Urza is broke as hell. The Might Stone is a solid ramp artifact that gets us from 5 mana to 7 or 8. It can be removal or card draw if we need it. It is legendary so we lose any copies we make but if we keep it as a token we can copy it with World Walker Helm. Insane card draw or targeted removal at instant speed. Sick. And finally, the big bad. The portal is a home wrecker. It will demolish enemy men and then we get them back on our side. We can blink it with Abuelo or Prince Urza can make copies of it. Either way it will likely be GG's. Our lands include 2 Demolition Field, for those pesky lands like Mirax or Enemy Man lands. 4 Deserted Beach, the duel in our colors. 4 A Dark Our Wastes, the Pain Duel. 2 Otawara, Soaring City, the channel land that bounces a permanent. 5 Island. 5 Plains. And 2 A Ganjo, Seat of the Empire. The channel land that can be used as removal. One card we have been looking to squeeze in is Cryptic Coat. It should work out great in the deck, being able to trigger Synthesizer almost every turn while building our board. Playing the deck is rather straightforward. We look to begin building our board on turn 3 when our Synthesizer will likely land. From there it's just a matter of continuing to build up. Early on we might need to block but in the mid game we should start to outsize most enemy men. The late game will see us dominate with cards like the Might Stone and the Portal. That's the deck boys. Let's go play some games. This is the pro wrestler Dark Angle, no wait, it's Dark Angel. My bad bro. We kick things off with a 4 lander with double iron crag. We do have one removal but in all honesty, this is an awful hand. Maul.
Then we get a two lander with double removals and a high noon. We're missing our artifacts but this is better than the first hand. Keep. Your pants on. They land an informant. Snitches get stitches. This early we will likely be hitting their guy with a removal. Oh nice, good to see the shuffler make sure we draw into our top end before turn 3. We'll land a high noon. It might make them stutter which could save us some damage. They stroll in like they were invited. All we can do is take the hit. I'm not sure if they know how high noon works but plotting something means that's gonna be their only play sometime in the future. Not drawing a land means this is a removal turn. Or a negate turn. It should have seen us dropping synthesizer but of course, shuffler. They go for more men, but that's something we can't let them have. We've got our hands full already and there's no telling when we might draw a third land. Limiting their board is likely better for us in the long run. Great. At least they are stuck on two lands as well. High Noon makes all their card draw not so advantageous. Regardless of how many cards they have in hand they can only play one. And their card draw is going to be it for the turn. Finally we can make their guy magically. Disappear. A third land finally. Let's get our synthesizer down. That's an awful scry. We could use the planes, that's another mana closer to playing out the might stone. They didn't like that high noon at all. The map tokens eventually help us out by making the first robot that much bigger. We can snipe a couple of their guys. We'll go for the show off first. Although now that I've fired it off maybe we should have hit the gatekeeper first. Actually, that turned out fine. We do want the show off gone and they tried to save it. Luckily we have another removal. Well, that was rather painful. It would have hurt a bunch regardless of who we aimed our removal at. Let's snipe their Delny. It would have been nice to get draw but we want to equalize the board. They get their Delny back from the grave. We're going to be short of being able to play out the portal. That would give us the edge. A relic will make sure we get there on our next turn. For now we might be able to hold them up since we have enough blockers to stop all but one of their men. Of course they hit a removal. Yeah, we're done. Not a great start to our campaign but we were nearly there. GG's.
This is Spy Sai Nacho. Nacho Daddy and definitely Nacho ATM. We get a 3 lander with a high noon and synthesizer. This hand is legit. Keep. Your pants. On. Hey, are they a dino deck? But they named human. Kind of a weird start for them. We'll play out high noon. It's possible they may not have multiple cards to play per turn but this way we will know they won't for sure. Once we hit 3 mana it's time to get synthesizer in play. Let's see what we get with our scry. That's double removal. I'm expecting to see some big men on their side and both of those could be useful. For now we do have iron crag to play out and a helm as well. They fire off a smuggler's surprise. I'm rather surprised. Their missing big men in hand is likely what's up. They get back a guy in a land. Good to know. We'll play out the Iron Crag first since we do want to eventually get to 9 mana. We're not under serious pressure yet either so we can take the time to set up our future turns. This is one of those instances where we do get burned by our own high noon. We could have dropped the helm right after Iron Crag, but we're fine with how this is going. They go for a plot and that's their turn used up. We're not going to fire off removal for A11. That's waiting for their big stuff. We'll play out the helm and get our first robot. It's a rather small 5-5, lol. They land a 5-5 of their own but ours grows and theirs does not. Also, that counts as their spell for the turn. We're very short of the mana we need for portal. But we can still grow our army using the helm. They plant a stomper. It'll be an 8-8, but it won't be doing anything for another 3 lands lol. It's a very nice decoration. I knew they wouldn't send it, but I was hoping they would. Anyways, we'll double up on our robot overlords. Now we're just 2 mana short. Let's go in for damages. It's highly unlikely they'll block so this is a free 7 shot to their face. They drop another brawler. This one will be blown up to a 10-10. Hefty and chunky. That is a lot of beef. We'll make another token at the end of their turn. And now we have 399 killer robots. They want to beat face bro. We'll send one of our bots in for damages. Let's see if they take an easy 9 damage like they took the 7. No way, 
They blocked with their biggest brawler, that's a total gift. We get to take down a brawler that's not even attacking us. Before damage, let's pump out another token. Oh yeah, 1111. What you gonna do when robots run wild all over you? This is the weirdest trait of all time. Sure bro. You do. You. An Itali would be rather frightening but he's only going to be a 14-14. That's rather tiny. It's weird looking at a big monster and thinking it's small lol. And wow, they didn't even get anything with Itali. Oopsie poopsie. Are we seriously one land short? Let's crack one of these map tokens and see what we get. That will do. We could even bounce one of their men, the brawler maybe. Let's hold off. Using it for mana would be better anyways. We'll be able to play out the portal. A terror of the peaks is actually frightening. That's a big flyer and on top of that they can start playing out big men and dishing out a ton of damage. Lucky for us we have an equalizer in hand. Oh yeah, that's right. Kiss yourself in the porthole son. We're stinking your ship. The pain will be real. GG's. Oh wait, they didn't give up. Anyways, each robot is lethal on its own. Let's send the team. They cracked ladies and shark men. Like an egg. This is wait go and then they fell asleep at their keyboard. Oopsie poopsie bro. The shuffler is giving us some awful hands at times. This four lander is really something. To spite the shuffler, we'll keep. No early plays for our gruel opponent. That will only help us out. The horn of plenty. That gives us no clue as to what they will be up to. Christmas comes early, we get a synthesizer and autoplay it. Let's see what we have on top. We'll send the planes to the bottom but we will definitely keep the synthesizer on top. That's gonna be double the trouble. They play a 4 mana 3-3 three three with Toxic. That's nothing to worry about when we're about to make the first of a long line of robot overlords. We don't really need a second portal but we could use Abuelo to blink the first one once we get it down. They plop down a dino. It's only a 7-6. Kind of small. We'll be at that size soon enough. 10 damage coming in. We'll take it. There's no point in blocking and making our future men smaller. If I'm not mistaken, their 4-4 has ward too. Let's take a look at it to be sure.
We just took out two of their mana. They go for ramp. A little bit light on mana bro. Then they drop a fight rigging out of the blue. That's interesting. And a free spell for them depending on what they get. This is one of those instances where a high noon would have been nice to have. A free Itali. It's a train of pain. They get one of our relics but that's not much use at this point. And they get a tyrant. It's only a 6-6 so it's nothing to worry about. They send in their dino. Free trades are us. We'll block up and take down his guy. We're one mana short of dropping the portal. For this turn we should send an Abuelo. It's insane that all we have to do is blink the Might Stone and we make out like bandits. This is broke as hell. And hey, there is the land we need. It's GG's they just don't know it yet. They even play the chair in their deck. I don't know if that's a good move or not. They drop an archway which we can take out with our demolition land. Did they think we were tapped out? It's time to kiss that porthole. We're stinking your ship. Let's take a 30 bite out of their life. I suppose they could block. Okay, only 20. That's still a good chunk and it'll keep getting bigger. We have a second portal but Abuelo can blink the one we have in play right now every single turn once we untap. That should end the game unless they can kill off Abuelo. Against other decks, I'm sure this would look really bad but we're on the verge of blinking a portal on our turn and theirs. They'll need to get 6 men in play on each of their turns to not lose what they have on board. They are going to run themselves out of cards lol. I can't see how they'll get through to hit us for another 10 damage.
I guess they saw the writing on the wall. GG's.